right, everyone. Good evening, golf friends, and welcome to our webinar series, Tuesday Traces. The purpose of this webinar is to show how the V1 pressure mat can uncover truths about player movement, specifically in rotational sports. I love chatting with some of our most exceptional industry partners and friends on this Tuesday Traces platform every Tuesday night. Um, we cut up, we have fun, and we learn a ton. Welcome to all the folks that have registered and have joined us via the Zoom webinar, and welcome to all the folks tuning in to the V1 Sports Facebook Live channel. Um, the recording of tonight's webinar will be available on the V1 Sports YouTube channel in a few days um, after Anna edits it. If you've registered for this webinar, you will automatically get a copy of that recording. Um, we love, love, love answering questions. We love comments. So throughout the evening, please post them in the chat window on Zoom or on the Facebook live and my girls will send over the questions and we'll ask to uh, get them over to Jimmy. Um, I always joke that we only answer the good questions, but we actually answer all the questions, even the silly ones. Okay, V1 Sports is a 26 year old company and the leader in delivering video analysis instruction solutions and ground force technology to athletes and coaches around the world. I used to say to golfers and golf instructors, but now I say athletes and coaches because we are actually servicing tons of different sports with our technology and pressure map. In those 26 years, however, we have supported over 4 million lessons and 10,000 V1 affiliated golf coaches. We are extremely passionate about supporting your golf and baseball business. I and Mandy Von C, Southeast Regional Sales Manager for V1 Sports. I was born, raised, and based right here in Charleston, South Carolina. The bridge is right there behind me in Kiowa. Ocean Course is about five miles away the other way. It's a pretty exciting week for golf as we welcome the PGA Tour to Kiowa for the PGA Championship. And I'm super excited to visit with some really cool um, folks, this week, V1 instructor and tour player Rob LaBritz and I are going to have coffee in the morning. Mike Thomas, who uses V1 constantly to film JT, and Derek Ingram, who is the coach to Corey Connors, who loves the pressure mat, and I will be walking together on Friday and Saturday. But tonight, I'm excited to welcome my buddy and fellow South Carolinian Jimmy Shaw to Tuesday Traces. Jimmy, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, glad to be here. I'm so excited. Glad so um, it's a pretty exciting week here, don't you think? It's going to be a fun one. It'll be, uh, we're going to see what they can do with, I guess they stretched it out to what, like 7,800? It's unbelievable. It's the longest course, I yeah. think, in, in, yeah, tour history. And they, uh, yeah. I was watching last night, the superintendent said that it is hard and long. And my, uh, my 14-year-old is a master fisherman, so he watches the winds like crazy. He thinks the winds are going to be a little challenging this weekend on the afternoon. Yeah. We shall see. Um, yeah. Okay, guys, a little bit about Jimmy. Well, before I tell you anything about Jimmy, I want to specifically congratulate him for moving on to stage two of the USGA US Open qualifier. Um, this was his fifth round of golf this year, and he played incredibly. He played long growth blind. Um, congratulations. So proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's a really big yeah. deal. Um, I... I will tell everyone last week we do a test and Jimmy was kind of tired. And I said, come on, pro, what's going on? It's Monday. Why are you so tired? And he's like, well, I just went and won something yesterday, qualified on the 18th. Uh, goal. So our team is super proud of that. Um, and, uh, you know, I always say I have a lot of isms. Your pro should play golf. So I'm updating that to your pro, sh your pro should play golf and your pro should be using pressure or measuring pressure. And hopefully everybody can qualify and uh, play better golf like you did clearly last weekend. Oh, yeah. Okay, a little bit about Jimmy's resume. He has studied and played the game of golf for more than 30 years, although it does not look like that because he looks like a baby. His coaching philosophy is that, his, is that the body reacts on both a conscious and a subconscious level to perform each shot. Clearly, I agree with that. Further, he does not believe in teaching a single system for each student because not everyone has the same experiences that have led them to this point in their enjoyment of the challenge of the game of golf. Nor does each person have the same physical and mental attributes. Um, that is so true. I think we're going to show a little bit of that tonight when we're going to see some young players, some really old players, and some super athletic players. But Jimmy, can you specifically talk to us a little bit about your teaching philosophy, what that means to you? Um, so my teaching philosophies come a lot based on the past. I'm a big Hogan fanatic. So obviously the five lessons is kind of like my big kind of go-to. Um, big fan of Nick Faldo growing up. So 
and how it kind of evolved over time and realizing that not everybody's the same. So I've had the pleasure of being good friends with Ian Baker Finch um, for the past 30 years. Um, and we were talking about putting one time and talking about length of putters. And he said, well, Jimmy, you're like 5'10 and I'm 6'4". So why would we have the same length putter? We're different. So that kind of struck a chord in me for everything. And that, I mean, I'm 5'10". You'll get guys like Dustin Johnson that are 6'4". Um, not everybody can do the same. Um, you're just built differently. And so it's trying to tap in. And not only that, but when I start teaching somebody, especially from other sports, they come from different backgrounds. So I like to kind of get an idea of like playing baseball. Like you said, you have baseball guys on. Um, Shreya, who we'll see some swings of later, she was actually a tennis player. Mm. So they all have a little bit different um, path that they got to where they were in golf on any level. So you can't form, I don't believe, I think it's impossible unless somebody ha you know, has a lot of time to do it, to try to get them into a system. Sure, there are certain things that they've got to be able to do. Um, but a certain point by point by point basis, it's not possible. Plus, 90% of the people I play, I teach, have a job. So they can only get, you know, like an hour a day. So trying to teach them how to go along in a two-second time period, I mean, it's, I basically give them my first lesson. I go, we're going to do one thing today, and we're going to perfect one thing, and then you're going to come back later. Trying to give so much along the way. And plus, I think if you can fix one thing, if, so if I go through and I say, okay, we go through all this, say I come up with 20 things. I can pick one thing out and it might fix 12 of them by the night, right. just on one thing. So um, if you do too much, it just overcrowds. So they need, it needs to be reactive. A lot of people don't realize that golf is a reactive sport. It's not just stand there. Everybody thinks basketball, football, baseball are all reactive. Golf is just reactive. You have to react to every situation. So if you're thinking too much and your way to connect the dots, it's going to be a mess. And that's why people don't enjoy it because they're like, well, I'm supposed to do this. And I go do this. And I go here. And that's just impossible for people to do on a regular basis. If they've only got, some of them only have like an hour, three hours a week. Right. So trying to get them to be more reactive. is. And I can imagine as a golf coach that as you have a student for years and years and years and they go through different changes and maybe a teenager growing into a different body or a Correct. Um, person going through an injury or... Um, I, that, that you would have to adapt to, you know, teaching. Um, okay, so you mentioned to me the term, the matrix transition. <laughs> so this is, so um, I kind of came up with it. It's, it's really a lot for the driver. Um, and it's the matrix as in the movie, The Matrix. Um, you know, kind of when Neo's avoiding bullets, he slows down. So I came up with the matrix mainly because when everybody gets to the top, the first thing they want to do is just absolutely maul it. And that was the other thing that I always tell students is golf errs and golf teachers, we use some of the worst vernacular for the mental game. And when you go to the range, you don't hit a ball. I mean, physically tell me how you hit a ball. Like if I took a couple, I hit a ball, you know, people would look really stupid trying to go down and punch a ball. You swing a golf club. Ball gets so in the way. The ball gets in the way, exactly. So the Matrix whole thing was is you get back, and it's like you just slow down like Neo does. You just get back, and it slows, even though that's what the feel is. It keeps everything. You're talking about pressure, about getting the load into the left side. It gets everything to come up from the, from the ground up. So you get up there, and it just slows, and you set, and then you can just – fire through because now everything is set in motion um instead of most people when they think hit they go straight with the shoulders and right. you can't and you know with the pressure mat being able to read it if you go with the shoulders that thing doesn't move off your right it just like turns in place and then it looks all funky then you get your your half football looking line because it goes out to your toes but right. this getting set gets it gets the, the weight shift that you need and gets everything, your body in sequence to go through um, rather than just trying to go 
it's it's not a drag race. It's more like a NASCAR race. You know, people will try to go 150 miles an hour right from the top instead of building all the way through. So that's what the matrix was, is that you kind of get that feeling of almost coming to a floating stop and then all of a sudden just fire. Do you teach um, that to all your students? No, it's, it's, uh, I don't, um, it's really the fast swingers um, are, are good with that because um, baseball swingers, I got one, one uh, student, he just, he can swing it. I mean, he can get up to like 115, 160, but it's so fast. I mean, he just doesn't know where it's going to go. Right. And so this kind of helps him get set in, in a way of getting it in the sequence of getting this here and then it gets set. Then you get the separation of the left from the right shoulder and you fire through. Right. So if you are a fast winger, a, a high, you know, very high ability, low handicap, a great deal to try to feel i mean you'll feel like all of a sudden it's there and then you can just unwind and you can just rip it because now everything's the same right okay so you guys my friend jimmy received his pressure mat in pressure mat in october of 2020 like oh shoot someone's calling our sales line hang on sorry okay so just a few months ago um he's writing greenville so i offered to drive up there and like set it up for him and he was already using it before i could get up the road so I highly recommend following Jimmy on Instagram. He has some really cool, fantastic pressure trace content. Um, he figured this mat out and how to use it for his students really quickly. Um, and it's clearly evident when you look at his Instagram page. The girls will put his Instagram handle over in the chat screen. Um, but check it out. Not only are his, is his content cool, but the way he's presented the pressure trace in the video is very educational and I highly recommend. Um, I'd also like to point out um, coming from a video analysis uh, software company, the teaching bay at the Brad Sill Golf Center where Jimmy is, is beautiful. Um, take note, he's standing in it. Um, we can't see the whole room, but it is clean. It is beautiful. He has one pretty picture on the wall behind him, um, yeah. but he's hitting out and it's, there's not, not a whole bunch of clutter. It is awesome. You will all also notice that when you check out his Instagram page, Jimmy, excellent job on your academy and keeping it um, perfect for videos that I your guess. students get after the fact so circling back to my original point right. um, Jimmy you just got your mat how how did you learn it so quickly you know what did you do I always tell people just get on it I know you did that but how, how tell everybody here the the hundreds of people right. tuning in how you figured it out so quickly <laughs> uh well one I did actually watch a Tuesday trace back in September and oh, so cool. they kind of went over I can't remember um, uh, it was Mike Sullivan, I think. And so he went over a few things before I got it. And so I kind of had some things to look for. Um, and then I basically tried on, tried it out for myself. So I'll, in between lessons, I will sit there and try and get, and, and I worked like my first trace was terrible. I mean, I was into my toes and I didn't get left. It was just awful. And so Basically, it became me sitting there and I take my iPad and I put it at my feet and just start swinging and trying to get it to match up. And then a lot of it, too, I tell people when, they're, when I'm teaching them and I give them a drill to do, do it with your eyes closed. Mm -hmm. um, if you ever, like, do this test, like, turn off the lights, get it pitch black in your, in your room and walk across the room, you won't realize it, but you close your eyes, which is kind of weird because it's already pitch black but right. you close your eyes because you turn on every all your other senses mm -hmm. and so that's what I did I would do stuff and I would close my eyes and then I would video and then I would take that I would record I just push record just so that the mat was there they didn't record my swing but I would close my eyes and do the feel and then I would go back and review the what the mat said and uh so then I could get a feel so then I started was able to um basically teach myself what I should be feeling, what I felt, how I felt uh, when I was doing it. And then, then I could have the feedback on the mat. So sometimes just laying it down, taking the box, fanning it out and pushing record and just kind of closing your eyes and playing with the mat makes a huge difference. Um, it can kind of, you know, self-educate you um, on that regard. But it was really, I watched, 
like I said, that one Tuesday trace with Mike, wrote a few things down, kind of went back and looked at my swing, and then, you know, basically used myself as a guinea pig um, to test some things out, and it's just kind of evolved from there. I just kind of worked my way into into um, figuring it out, so to yeah. speak. Yeah, cool. Real, really great. I love that, and I love that you – um got on it and i will definitely send mike sullivan a message that says uh and let him know how much you got out of his trace i thought that was a really good one too um i always say feeling real is two different things boy that's not oh, yeah. that is so true with the pressure mat i don't know that i've ever talked to anybody literally that has stood on the mat for the first time and knew what their trace was going to be it's always different than what you think it is uh, but that's oh, so yeah. cool to you know when you to suggest, and that's something we haven't heard, to see your trace correctly, right? You, you see what is wrong. And right. then once you fix it, to close your eyes. And, and you're right that your other senses really turn on when you do that. So what a cool drill. You know, at the end of these traces, people always ask us for drills. So I think that would be a good one to, to remember here, to close your eyes once you've nailed the closest linear trace that you can get. Um, that's a really cool right. nugget. Thanks, Jimmy. Okay, so... Um, the people are probably tired of hearing from me. Let's uh, let's see some traces, if that's okay with you. Um, we're going to see a lot of fun traces. While Jimmy pulls those up, uh, I just want to point out, Jimmy, are you cool to do a screen share? Mm -hmm. cool. So I think we're going to start with Sharia. Is that right? Sharia, yeah. Oh, yeah. Crap. And is she is she here yeah. with us? Has she joined us tonight? Do we know? I do not, I don't know if she is or not. Okay. Uh, is this showing? Uh, it is, yep. And if you can tell us a little bit about how old she is, okay. sort of where you started, what we're looking at, you know. Oh, there, the you, there you go, there was a swing. Uh, you okay. better blink, this is the first swing, okay? Um, so she is 22. Um, I told her when I first met her and found out she is actually at Tufts right now, and she is getting her doc. She is getting her PhD and MBA at the same time. Woo! Um, smarty, smarty. Yeah, kids. I know. Smarty. So, um, but she played high school tennis. So that's kind of where we, where I kind of. So whenever I give a lesson, I always kind of talk background, so I can kind of have an idea of what kind of how they learn, um, where they came from. Like I said, sport background and the like. So. You will see it does not take long for the first swing. Um, this is about as far back as we went, and that's about as far as it, as it got. Okay. Um, and so what I did was is I really tapped into her tennis. And, you know, how did she swing a forehand? How did she, you know, what was her um, forehand like? What did she feel like? I showed her the mat. Um, and her trace and gate, because obviously being that smart, she's going to be very analytical. So um, I kind of went through the mat, kind of showed her what the traces should look like or, or discussed it with her. And then we tapped into the tennis and had her do a lot of, like I said, closing her eyes and making tennis motions. Because tennis and golf are, are biomechanically virtually the same. I mean, if you watch- Rotational sports. Uh, rotational yep. i mean even if you watch them hit forehands they step left and then and then it you know it shifts into their lead side then their hips turn then the shoulders snap through and then here comes the racket so it's very similar so this was actually at the end of the lesson okay so this okay. is in one hour wow yeah so that was her in one hour being able to, we got back and I just told her, and I use a drill, it's very adolescent where we toss a ball. I can show that later. Yep. We toss a ball. Um, and so we tossed the ball for a while while we were mixing in the tennis. And you can see her tennis actually helps her have like a flat left wrist. Obviously we don't get into a whole lot of the swing mechanics, but you can see, look at her trace, how she goes just straight through. And then I would just say, just hit forehand. Yeah. And that's what, this turned out to be is that she just went back and just ripped it coming through so that was um, um that shria and then she just started off um and then from there of course she goes through the learning pain 
but um, for the most part, it was perfect. Cool. So can you kill your share just so I can ask you a couple of questions about her? And I've got a couple of questions from the group too. I just don't want to look at your um, yeah. software. I'd rather see your face. So when, so Shreya, how is her golf game now? And do you guys still use the mat every lesson? We do. We always use the mat. She went back to Tufts in January for school. So I haven't seen her since then. Um, I've, um, she's been just obviously studying, doing, yeah. trying to nail all that down. I mean, you can only imagine, but. Um, and then when you worked no, she, with her with the mat, you put the, you put the iPad in front of her and you gave her the fresher data, right? You let her see it and really talk oh, yeah. to her about it. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know. I go through every, every student I go through and I videotape with the mat and I go through and I'll move the mat down and kind of talk with how it should be into the right, into the left, at what points, so they can get an idea. And then it kind of, like I had one student say, he was, he's an engineer. And he goes, this is like looking at it like 4D because you go, the, the, uh, the foot pressure kind of comes from the floor, but the, the trace comes from the ceiling. Right. And then you got the two others. So he's like, it's really, for him, it was great. And for her, it was the same thing. She could feel the pressure and then when I had her close her eyes and toss the basketball backwards um just tossed it and then had her close her eyes and do it it made the most sense so um she loved to see that and then she, obviously I would lay it down and have her toss the ball and toss it through and videotape how she did it and then play it back so she could get that feedback of what the feel and then it was actually obviously like you said feeling real yeah how it translated right I love that. Um, a question from Bronco Bill. Uh, 55 to 60% remains on lead leg and stack and tilt. How do you feel about this method to improve contact? Uh, I'm not thrilled about stack and tilt. That's not my favorite. <laughs> stack and tilt is always such a challenging thing to talk about. Yeah, Some people you love it. Yeah. <laughs> ask, Mike Weir, ask Mike Weir about stack and tilt. Um, <laughs> It's not my favorite. I understand why people do it. I mean, you know, it's, you know, it, it's, I understand it's kind of a simplistic, more simplistic way of, of kind of doing it. I like to have a little bit more movement. I feel that there's way too much. And now it depends on the, of the level of the person, if they how much time they get, but if they don't get a whole lot of time and, and then staying there, sometimes people really come out real quick and it just gets, right. it can get, I just, it's not my favorite. So Bronco Bill, um, I will answer that question a little bit. I will tell you, Tom Segudo is a instructor um, in South Carolina as well. One of my good buddies. He is a huge stack and tilt guy and he owns a pressure mat. Um, he did a Tuesday chase with me and he talked a ton about the stack and tilt method. Um, you know, we back up, we want to back up all of our golf pros and their teaching method, whatever that would be and give them great technology to communicate that. So um, if I were you, I would go have a look for the Tom Segudo webinar recording. You will see yeah. a ton of great stack. It is, it is a, it is definitely a specified, I mean, you like, you've got to commit to that. That's not one of those you can like, you're either in the water or you're out. You're not just going to wade in, in the kiddie pool. Or not. Right. So. so speaking of percentages though. Um, you know, we talk about 70% and the lead at impact. Do you agree with that with the driver? Is that what you're teaching? Yeah, I try to get them to 60, feel 40. as, I, I really almost, I try to get them as much as possible into the feeling like they get into the left as much as possible. I almost don't even put this, because most people, when they start, their idea of a golf swing is to like lift the ball. So they always are going to the right. So I don't even like get percent. I'm like, just get over there, get as far over there as you can get just to get them started. Right. Um, right. I do a, right. I do a scale. So think high lofted. I mean, high lofted. So like your L wedge and your driver. So when you are um, turning back with the wedge, you're pretty centric. So on the wedge, I really say it's all legs on wedges. Like you just really press and just keep going. Um, instead of hanging back because then you can get scoopy, it can ride the pace. 
Right. We can get a whole lot. Now on the driver, because you're so much more wound up, really feeling that club head staying out, you're already going to get this way. If you turn back right, you know, if you turn back right, it's just like cut the cord and you can go. Um, so that's one thing is I really like to make sure that they get turned back well and then get that club head going around because if you're already here and then you really force it, you can get into the 90s and you can leave the club back. Right. So it's a lot, you know, so yeah. you've got to watch kind of your timing on that one. Um, right. But that I have a, I kind of teach a scale, so to speak. And when you, when you're talking about that scale, which I kind of like, do you have that just in your head as sort of what percentage you want for the club? Are you sharing that? And did you just come up with that since you had the mat? Yeah, I kind of came up with the mat is, and obviously testing on myself. I was always a very high wedge player. I was never able to kind of hit it low. And then since I've had the mat and really, I'll try to get almost to where I feel like I'm 100% left. Like I'll tell people like swing back, go left, lean left, go left, and just keep going left down the target. <laughs> target, target, I mean, you target. Can't, yeah, just keep going, you know? And that's why I always tell people is, the flag is your target, not the ball. Right. Some people, you know, that gets back into the hitting or the swinging. But I will lean and tell them just to keep going left. Um, a guy I just had a day, we worked on wedges, and he was the same. It ride the face. Because they all, because most people will stay there. The other thing with wedges is they put it in the back of the stance. So that's just going to increase, it's going to force your hands to go early. If it's in the back. You can go back to like Mac, the Mac O'Grady's back in the early 80s type stuff. But it's really, if you get this, I put the wedges forward to center because it forces you to keep going left and just keep driving the legs because you don't take it back and get enough momentum going this way right. on your wedges. So um, as you move back in club, you start getting your axis of rotation gets further and further back. So your momentum's already there. Right. And so on the wedges, it's left, go left, keep going left, and don't stop until you get out of the building, pretty much. Um, and it drops it down. And my, my wedges come in really low, which I've never had before until getting that feeling of just staying left. And it's all arms. So it's like legs, 100% legs, zero arms on the wedges. You get back, it's a feeling, totally not real. Oh, it's almost like a hundred percent club head, zero percent on the on the legs on the driver, if you've gotten your driver in the right spot, because you're already going to be there. Right. Ooh. I mean, it's just a reaction. Yeah. Um. Okay. So I'm going to make a comment. Kurt Waldenhausen, Walthausen. I'm sure I butchered that. Do you know how to fix that last name? So I don't. He's know. unfixable anyway. <laughs> well, he made a comment about his golf game. Uh, student, student of, <laughs> no, he's one of my students. <laughs> student of Jimmy's for four months, 1.5 handicap. One of the reasons I started working with him was the V1 pressure mat and other tech. He put me on the mat to show me how long my swing was causing me to get back over to the left before finishing the back wing. So he helped me understand why shortening the swing was vital. Also worked on really getting weight back to the left. Now he's helping me with shallowing the club. Yes, absolutely. Getting the weight to the left. Thank you, Kurt, for your comment. I always love hearing what students retain from their pressure mat information mm -hmm. data. And I think that's so cool that you got that much out of the pressure mat. So good job, Jimmy, communicating. And thank you for sharing, Kurt. Um, not sure pressure mat. <laughs> oh, God. I'm laughing because Bronco Bill has um, commented over there in our chat that he does know Tom Sakuto, and he's calling him Crazy Tom. And I know Tom, and I can agree with you. He is wild. He is absolutely crazy. Not crazy, but he's really fun to watch. Okay. Pete Vela has a question for you, Jimmy. What's the average pressure on the driver at impact? Ideal number these days on pro golfer compared to high-ranking amateur. So he wants to know, Pete, and I know why he's asking, specifically driver, specifically pressure at impact. And he's asking for pro versus um ranking amateur which i hope you can answer since you just got that he pete teaches a drive chip and putt um young yeah. lady tiny thing so that's why mm -hmm. he's asking that question specifically the 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 average amateur for the most part um 
they almost very rarely pass the 50% threshold. I mean, it, it barely, you know, they get over here and they just turn and it just doesn't move. Um, I can't remember who it was. It might've been uh, Clap. Clap posted something where he showed every, every tour player the first move, even though you don't really notice it, is boom, they bump left. Yep. So, I mean, um, and you'll see in uh, Humpy's trace that we do later, um, it didn't go left very quick. Mm. I, I sh and I should say it's not so much how much they get left, it's when. Right. You know, right. I, I think when I think when is, is probably more important than just how much, because if it, you know, if if you go back and it, most amateurs they start unwinding here, it's staying right. You can't get you can't get over there. So it's a lot less of how much and it's when. Okay, so when. Right at the start. I mean, it's start I mean, of the start look, of the downswing, right? Right at the start. I mean, if you look at all the power hitters, I mean, take take Rory for instance. He's been talking about doing the whole Bryson, what happened with Bryson. But if you look at his, he did a deal, gosh, a few months ago, but he talked about, and I show, uh, the good thing with the V1 is I can show his swing down the line. They've got a down the line swing in the model. And everybody thinks that Rory opens up those hips to start with. He doesn't open until the club is right about here, and it's a snap. So, but he gets his first move to, to pump it is that right into the left leg. His first move on the downswing is that he just yep. to get it to pump it left and then it spins them out. So it's how fast and how quick can you go left? Not just so much left, but how fast? Um, I don't think you can put a number. I, I mean, I don't know. I haven't done enough research to get the exact percentage. All I know is, is that that thing if that dot is staying on your right foot and you are here, it's not going anywhere. It's got to be Late. there. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's early and often. Right. Derek Ingram is the Canadian national golf coach. He is the coach to Corey Connors and they train with the pressure mat um, all the time. And I have recently watched some of Corey's um, swings on the tour just because I know that he uses the pressure mat. And I think that's so cool. And boy, if you see face on swing of Corey Connors, you are absolutely right. He is moving to his left side at the very beginning of his downswing. Oh, yeah. And it is, it is, he is stamping down. Um, Darcy Dillon is another pressure mat guy. Really cool drill on his Instagram page. He takes a cow squeaky toy. He puts it under yeah. the left foot. He actually has his students squeak the toy as they're coming on their downswing. So a really fun drill for uh, to make that happen. Yeah, people, you can do that with water, like a washcloth, and make the thing squirt water bottle. <laughs> yeah. See how far you can make it squirt. Um, I do the whole step deal where you step, and then you know, I really actually was told that, and and bef actually before I got the pressure mat, but the pressure mat kind of elevated the the thought is that I taught a student and he taught uh, batting. He was a batting coach, and it was like the principles of batting. And so, because, I mean, he was basically a beginner. And so we worked so hard. And he goes, it's kind of like the principle of batting. You go left, then you click the hips, and then you bring the bat through. And so it's very similar to golf. I mean, you get here, you push left, you click the hips, and then everything snaps through. So um, nice. it was a cool little deal. Um, I've got some more questions that I'll get to in a minute, but I'd love to see – you know, we're going to see a lot of different traces tonight, but Sharia was a very obviously clearly a beginner, beginner, beginner. Um, we have an 86 year old. Is that right? Is he a beginner golfer as yeah. well? Oh, no. Roland? No. Roland, he, I, I think he's 86, but he came to me about two years ago and he got one 30 minute lesson. He's like, I just can't do this. I've, it's just, he shot like 95. He's been playing for a long time. And I was like, Roland, you know, let's just go down there and make it simple. And then he went out and shot his age like the very next day. So um, he, no, he's been, he is not a beginner. He's a very, very good player. That's awesome. Let's see his boy. trace. Let's see his trace. I'd love to see it. You guys, while, uh, while Jimmy does his share, just a few shout outs to some regulars. Doug Millar, thank you for joining me. Luz Solarte, V1 uh, member forever. Sherry Newsom, Sophia Lee, thanks for being here. And all my team members, I love seeing you guys. Kay Hatch, Marcella. Thanks for uh, tuning in. 
it's always nice when we have our teammates supporting All right, our let me make sure evening I've got hours. You guys put some questions over there for us. We're uh, we're happy to get to them. Marcella won the best question award last week, so. All right. Oh, well, I know I've got it in here. It's okay. What happened? Albie Garb, thanks for joining us. Another regular. I'm scrolling through. I hope I don't miss anybody. I sent it over there. Golly, they're not loading now. Anna, do you have um, Roland's swing that you could play? Okay, um, Jimmy, Anna's got it. She's gonna share it in two seconds. So if you'll just hang tight, let's, let's answer some more of these questions while we wait for um, Anna to share that video. Uh, and the girls, Kelly and, and somebody, I think Haley's here too, the, they're asking for Jimmy's Instagram link. Um, Okay, so Raymond says, I've been using the ground more this year and have increased my drives by 30 yards. That's fantastic. I have as well. Thank you, Raymond, for the comment. Um, oh, all right, there hang, there's, yeah, there, there's our, okay, so this is Roland. Thank you, Anna. Mm -hmm. And you'll just, if Jimmy, if you can just ask Anna to play or pause, she'll drive for you. Yeah, um, so what I did with Roland is he gets really, uh, gets back into his right side really well. Um, you can tell he's been playing a, a while. What I do with the seniors is because obviously he's 84. He's not, he doesn't have the mobility that he once did. So I have them actually open up their feet and open their stance with their feet and cheat the system. Uh, okay. Because now they don't have to try and be like an 18 year old with close stance. They can now it cheats the system. And so they're going ahead. So if you want to roll it going back there on a, to the top, you can see he's got an old school, he'll have an old school swing where he will go back. But you can already see his trace. His biggest deal is he tries to lift it. So you can see he's way, he gets back into his right really, really well. His fault is, is he lifts. He tries to lift it up in the air. So what I really try to get him to do is with that alignment stick on the ground to shift his weight into the left early and just keep it there and just keep driving into the left and realize and trust that the pivot will spit him out. So if you want to go ahead and go through, and this one was a really all the way to the finish, you'll see how well he gets all the way through and how early he gets into his left. He shifts probably the best of just about anybody um, when he does it. Yeah, you can see how, how, good his, how good his shift was all the way through. So- Yeah, Anna, can um, you just play it? It's a little yeah. delayed. Um, and it's, th that's a Zoom issue, guys. Sorry, um, Anna's doing a share. And so this is a Zoom thing that it's a little delayed, but maybe she can play it. We can just watch there we go. it. Yeah, there we go. Now it's catching up. Oh, look at that. You see how, yeah, he does. <laughs> but but he, he used to go to somebody and was like, you need more rotation, Roland. You need more rotation. I'm like, Roland, you're 84. You know, I mean, I hate to tell you, but now let's start using the ground there. He gets back really well and then shifts just perfect. You can see how early. He is able to get that le that weight left. I mean, it was like instantaneously he got it into his left side, and it lit watch his left leg right there. There, it's you amazing. Can, what right conversation? There. And tell us what you gave him to do that. Other than the alignment stick, what did you tell him just to get left fast? Just basically, <laughs> like I tell people with wedges, go get left as fast as you can and stay there. And just go and create that pivot, and the pivot and the ground will spit you out. And to realize that you don't have to open up real quick, you don't have to feel like you got to rotate. You can just keep going left, just get left as fast as you can, and stay there. And for him, it's just staying there. And I mean, he hits his hybrid out there about 130, and uh, right down the middle. And so um, his biggest deal is that he'll hang back on that right foot and try and slap it and try to get out there with his with his hands because he's an old school player. He's been playing for, gosh, 50 some odd years. So he's um, he's used to it, but you can see his leg action and not only opening up his hands. So if you are a senior, opening up your feet at, at address is a really good way of kind of cheating the system um, and, and helping you with, with uh, rotational issues that come about as you're getting older. 
no great, matter who you are. Great tip. I love that, Jimmy. That's so good to give uh, give the seniors a little bit more space in their stance. That's a great nugget. Yeah. Uh, Mark Ray has a great, great question that I will answer uh, with Jimmy's help. Mark Ray asked, can you use a mat with an iPad or an iPhone and the V1 Pro app? Yeah. Uh, Mark, yes, absolutely. You have to have the V1 Pro mobile app which of course is available for iPhone and iPad. With the V1 Pro Mobile, it automatically has the pressure mat integration. Um, that means when you connect it to the mat, the graphs just show up, just like you're looking at um, on the screen with Jimmy. He is using that exact same setup. He does not have a computer. Mm -hmm. He's just using his iPad or his iPhone. Um, not available on the Android device yet. However, we have hired an Android developer and we hope to have that available soon. Uh, but yeah, if you have a V1 Pro subscription, that's all you need. And it is plug and play and very easy. I highly recommend that too, Mark, because you can take the mat and the pressure mat, I mean, the mat and the iPad with you. Um, and the iPad is really cool and easy to just show the student. You do get all the graphs that you get in studio as well as mobile. We just don't put them on the screen because there's not enough real estate on the mobile devices there is on the computer. Jimmy, um, any comments on the mobile setup? You love it? Uh, I, yeah, I like that. The mobile is really good. I mean, I've got it on both. I use both because I'll go to one to the other. So it's right. It's very nice to have it on both. Nice. Okay. Um, I thank you for Raymond. How much? I assuming you're asking about the pressure mat. The pressure mat is three thousand um, dollars, and we have them in stock in Novi, Michigan. They usually ship a couple of days after you place an order. If you're interested, please feel free to email me. Um, or you can email sales. The girls will put my email address over in um, the chat window. Or you can call the sales line and one of us will pick up the phone and you can talk to us and ask us questions. Um, okay, let me just, there was a couple other questions. Jordan has, is an instructor at Eisman Golf Academy in Virginia. Thank you for joining us, Jordan. When does the pushback with the trail foot happen after you go left? Uh, I'm guessing he's talking about this part when you get finished the push back um jordan give us a little more clarification on that question and in the meantime i would love to talk a little clemson football now I, do you have those you should have both of those to play on a should okay haley can you send over um is it I think Haley got the Adam Humphreys. And did you send her Hunter's uncle as well? I didn't know. I didn't I know. Just just Adams. Okay. Adams is so, good. Adams is a good one to kind of look at different differences. That's a really good one for athletes. Okay. All right. Um the girls will pull that up, please, Anna and Haley. We're looking for Adam Humphreys. Adam Humphreys is a Washington Redskins wide receiver. He was a huge rock star um at Clemson and that is why I'm wearing my Clemson orange shirt tonight uh Jimmy is also an instructor for Hunter Renfro's uncle so there is a fresher trace for Hunter Renfro's uncle on his Instagram page does it drive your dad crazy you're teaching all these Clemson players uh it's all right I mean the rest of his family also went to Clemson so it's not like maybe different I mean I'm from Oklahoma so it'd be different if they like Texas or something like that then if you're a Longhorn <laughs> but being a tiger is terrible. It's not the it's worst not, thing in the world. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? It's the best <laughs> thing. It's the best thing. All right. Here is our guy. Right. Woo, this looks super athletic. So tell us about, you know, when did you start teaching Adam? Of course, he's, you know, you guys, if you don't know South Carolina geography, Spartanburg is extremely close to the Clemson campus. Right. Um, and even closer to their their golf course, right? The so right. So he was uh, he was a member, he, he was a member at the course that I used to be at here in Spartanburg. That's how I got to know him. Um, I recently just started like teaching him. I would give him tips. I told him one day when we were playing, I was like, I'm not gonna give you any more tips because I had three wood and he had three iron right next to it. So I was <laughs> like, that that whole bit is over. Um, but we've really just started to look at his swing. Um, he came in to get a driver fitting and then we really started, his driver's just been giving him problems. And the biggest thing for him is he's very athletic now his hands get up so we haven't even touched his hand placement yet but the biggest thing if you roll it to hat to where he gets to the top even though he's very very athletic you'll notice in the trace he barely gets right i mean that thing 
barely creeps over halfway into his into his right side, um, right there. And since he plays in the NFL, he's a slot. He's a Z receiver. He gets hit hard. Um, and he was telling me he has a lot of back pain. So a lot of people are afraid of opening up and loading that right hip. Um, everybody, you know, it's kind of like the old old way of doing it. You keep your Everybody thinks you get your shoulders 90 degrees and you get your hips 45. Well, that's kind of almost dissipated a little bit, um, i.e. Dustin Johnson, those kind of guys. But he's got a lot of low back pain. And you can see when you don't turn your right hip and get that loaded, you, you don't really give yourself a wall. And that's why his hands are already high. But you can see how they travel really far over, um, almost to where his – arm like basically makes his head go invisible um <laughs> yeah. like a john daly backswing it's, it, it, it is but he doesn't have any hip turn there's no hip mobility and i mean the guy can swing it i mean i think this one was like at 113 so he even missed it at 113 um but that's what he does for a living so he should be fairly good at changing direction yeah. um if, if you go through, now go down hey, and wait, through. Jimmy, can I, can I interrupt you? Wait, Anna, before yeah. you move, I, I want to say something yeah. about this trace. For anybody that has not watched a Tuesday trace and does not know what we're looking at, this is a really great graph. Oh, yeah. Anna, Sorry. will you take your cursor and, and sort of point out to people the toe area? So, guys, yeah. uh, we're trying to get people to the left foot and in their heel. So, Adam is clearly... Right. Um, got way too much weight on his right foot and way too much on his left toe. So if you're looking yeah. at the graph at the bottom of the graph, it's actually giving you a percentage number. So if you see us talking about 60, 40 or 70, 30, those are the numbers we're talking about. We're talking about getting weight to the left foot. And then we're talking about as much in the heel as possible. So Anna's going to circle the percentages on the right, which will show you toe versus heel. Mm -hmm. And another thing I learned recently from my pressure mat guys over on the baseball side, it's not necessarily your toes, but it's the top portion of your foot. Right. Um, I actually think in my head to bring my toes up in my shoes, that's my thought process to get my weight in my heels. But anyway, thank you, Anna. I, and for doing that, I just, if you are new to traces and I know there's some unfamiliar faces here tonight, thank you for joining us and please understand our graph here. So this is what we're looking at. Right. This is what the instructors yeah. are seeing. Uh, the yellow line is the trace and the white dot is the center of pressure. So that's the graph. Um, and I just wanted to interrupt you because that was such a oh, great fine. visual of, of the, the pressure um, for Adam. So anyway, keep going. Sorry to interrupt that. that oh, graph. you're good. And, and the thing is, is he's very, obviously he's in the NFL and he's, he's very, very strong lower body. So if that's not set properly, it can be very overactive too early i mean in a in a bad way to where i always say the the legs should go along the target line so basically parallel not towards the ball so basically that le that right leg you'll see a lot of people you start talking about early extension that right leg will force right towards the ball which doesn't really let you get into your left side so it should really go along um the target line um so if you go down a little bit keep going through you will see how he opens up real quick and he doesn't really get that far over you can see how he doesn't even really get into his left foot it's just kind of a now he spins real quick i mean he's yeah. got crazy amount of core strength obviously um and it allows him to get through but it's straight i mean you can look at his back his back already takes a beating and mm -hmm. like he was saying, he was like, man, if I could just figure out a way to not have so much back pain when I get done playing golf, um, it'd be great. Because he does this to obviously relax and to get away. He loves playing in the offseason. But you can just see how much back strain he's got. Um, basically a product of him being very, very strong. So if you want to go to the... Uh, the second one I sent, this is the fix. So this is what we did to fix it. Um, and this is what the second one looked like. And really what we focused on, just kind of a precursor, was opening up his hips, getting his hip, his right hip to just open 
and take off the pressure from his back. And you're going to see in the tray yeah. how, how much of an impact that made on his trace and his swing. Because like he said, I go, well, how'd that feel? He goes, I didn't feel anything. Nice. He's definitely um, compensating with the upper body to make up for oh, yeah. the lack of pressure oh, yeah. moving correctly in, uh, in his feet. But I think the girls are pulling that up. They got all the files. Yeah, that's fine. This video is. All right, she's pulling it up. Um, in the meantime, while we wait for Adam's uh, fix, David Ross, no. Um, Adam Humphreys is what we're looking for, Anna. Marcella, my teammate, has asked, when you do lessons, do you throw everybody on the mat, What, no matter their experience? I know you teach tons of different levels of golf. Mm -hmm. I do. I think it's, it's good to get an idea of it because um, I always use this analogy when my uh, middle son was starting to play. He would go out there and they just swing, you know. They just get a swing going because they don't know any better. And they use their body more to get the power. And obviously they don't have a conscious and that's where the subconscious comes in. They don't really have a conscious of what's doing it. They just kind of instinct. And so by showing them the mat, it shows them that they've kind of, you know, kind of gets them back into that childlike deal of using the ground instead of the, um, instead of their hands and having a conscious. Right. So here you can see this is kind of the fix. And I still got the high hand, but we opened up his hips just a little. He still didn't get quite over as much as I wanted to, but we got more of a gap there in his legs. And you can see oh, yeah. how much more left he, he got at the start. So he's still pretty tight. Um, he's still not, it's still uncovered, but you can see his hands were much deeper back. Um, a little bit deeper back than he was before. But you can see how he gets left into that left foot so much quicker this way because now he shifts. Boom. Yep. You can see and right, right yeah. there. Yeah. And he's way more balanced on his foot, way more weight in his heels Correct. than he was before. It's like almost Correct. 100% in his toes. Awesome. Yeah. I'd like, I'd like to get his, his more depth in there and get his hands obviously deeper going back. That's coach speak for away from his head right um, what did he say the about most, after this oh he really i mean he was just like man i just don't i just don't hurt um i just don't i don't i don't hurt anymore sorry we got something's going on around here um the, his biggest deal was just not hurting yeah his back not hurting i mean you can see there's no barely a gap there now he goes through um changing I, I think i saw a question about changing his pattern yeah what'd you do to change this what'd you do to make this improvement for him it was i do a lot of demonstrations that helps but i really showed him and kind of got him in the position of get this hip back um pull the right hip back don't just sit there and try and resist kind of let it turn back i use the analogy um Let's see, if you can come back to the screen, I'll show you. So I, I use the analogy of, so if you're right-handed, it's here. So there's the club, here's the body. If they're, yeah. going along the high, if they're going along the highway, the club feels like it keeps going straight and the right hip exits. So trying to get that right hip to go ahead and exit going back while the club keeps going down the highway. Um, I'll tell my students, I teach almost like a Nike swoosh backswing. So okay. If you, flip the Nike, okay. If, you, if you flip the Nike swoosh and you go back, if you send the club out wide here and this hip goes back, once it's done, this club goes, there's the swoosh. Right. That's a cool and now visual. I've gotten, cool. And now I've gotten loaded. So I really had him just try and open up and kind of not try to resist so much. Because that's how we always thought was like, I got to resist the hips going back. No, go ahead and open them. Go ahead and get, you know, get it open because it's just like a car. Uh, for South Carolina people, if you're driving for, from Columbia to, to Charleston, well, you want to go to Columbia to Charleston in the same time as it takes you to get to Orangeburg. 
you're going to have to go quicker. So if I can get this going back, this makes, I mean, look at Rory, look how much he opens up his hips, Dustin, yeah. how much they open up their hips. Plus it gives you much better balance and I'll hold his foot at the heel and make him feel the weight get into that heel. Like you were talking about almost screwing it into the ground. Right. So I hold it so that he feels that get back in the outer portion of his heel almost as he's opening. Um, and then basically like take the, the basketball and toss it out wide. If you toss it out wide, um, you get the hands out. I've got a 7-Eleven like on the other side. So with the driver, I tell him, toss that club all the way to 7-Eleven. Yeah. And you'll see, you'll just open straight up to toss it back there. And that's really a very, like I said, childlike adolescent drill. But it's a it's good great. feeling of, of getting your body to open. Your arms just go for a ride and they just toss it straight back and not get resistance and just chunk it all the way back there. So I love it. Those are great, great swing thoughts. Um, and we only have a few more minutes. So before we go, um, can people schedule lessons with you? Oh, yeah. In person? Go to one and, yeah. In person and, uh, and online. Yeah. Okay. So you're at the Bradsill Golf Center most of yep. the time, right? Yeah, pretty much 90% of the time now that we got the indoor deal. I do do short game, which the mat is really good for chipping and pitching. Um, I use the mat a lot for pitching and chipping and wedge play. So, again, if you're chipping, lean left, go left, and just keep going left. Right. Um, and don't sit back there and throw the club at it. Just keep going left. Awesome. Okay, so the girls have put your website up. Um, you guys can go take a lesson from Jimmy, specifically chipping, if he because uh, uh, he was just talking about that and uses the mat as well for all aspects of the game. But that is um, his contact information is there. You can schedule with him on his website, or you can send him a video by finding him in the V1 software. Um, a quick reminder, you guys, we have got a really special Tuesday traces in two weeks. Um, it is international or national women's golf day. We have a very special guest lined up. I'm super excited to welcome her. Um, if you want more in information on anything about V1, our software, our hardware, or the V1 pressure mat, you can call me or email me or email sales at v1sports.com. Um, we have got a really cool couple of months coming up. Keep an eye out for some exciting events, some exciting news. Um, my sales team is growing. We're going to do some fun challenges uh, coming up. I don't even know if some of them know about that yet. They're on the call. They're about to be put on the spot. So hopefully we'll see some of their traces soon. Um, thanks everyone for joining us. Jimmy, thank you so much. Uh, well, when you. do you play again? Uh, June 7th. I just don't know where yet. Okay. I could be back, uh, I could be back in Hilton Head or at West Palm Beach. Oh, I will be in West Palm the week of June 7th uh, doing lots of calls. I would love to come watch you play if you're there that week. Yeah, so it'll, be it'll be at the Bears Club. Yeah, I'll be at the Bears Club. So hopefully Perfect. that's what I get. That was my first option. I love it. I love it. Well, if you need a caddy, you let me know. I'm, I'm yeah, getting pretty good at it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> Kelly's going to be an expert after, uh, <laughs> after the week. Kelly, our director of marketing, is on Vicki Hurst's bag this week. She, uh, Vicki is her sister, and she's on the LPGA. So, Anyway, lots of exciting things. We love having you in our V1 family, Jimmy. Thank you so much for sharing all your great content yeah, on Instagram. If anyone has any follow-up questions, please send them through to my email um, and I'll have Jimmy answer after the fact. And like I said, the recording will be on the way. Cheers, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Pay attention to the major this weekend. I'm going to be out there. I'll be cheering for all my V1 family members and uh, saying hi from South Carolina. Jimmy, thank you for your time. Thank you. Love Thanks. you. Have so much fun. Bye. Thanks.